Hey, man. What's going on? Have you ever heard of John Rufo? John Rufo? Yeah. Uh, nope. I don't have anything. Uh, I think we need to get it out of the way right at the beginning because every time I've heard his name since I found him, uh, I think of John Ralphio. Different okay. guy. Different, Different guy. guy. <laughs> not We're the not same. going to- the word. <laughs> We're not doing that guy. <laughs> yeah, he is still the worst. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, no, he's uh, uh, don't don't get too far out of yourself. He <laughs> sucks for sure. Yeah, different guy. Also, um, different person. He's not Johnny Rufo. Uh, same name, John. Wouldn't but you have add the N Y. The N Y Johnny Rufo. Who's Johnny Rufo? It's not uh, him. Uh, he was uh, a finalist on the third season of the X Factor Australia. Um, is that who we're doing the episode about or is that Johnny Rufo? <laughs> That's Johnny. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Johnny not this is a different guy. I, we're pretty sure at least. I mean, could be jury's out. It's possible. They got the same name. It's just an extra two letters at the end. Johnny is on the third season John of Rufo. X Factor of the Australian X Factor. Oh, um, and he was a fine. I didn't realize that every country <laughs> had their own. Do you know that <laughs> they, you know, they got like Ireland's them. got talent. We all got our own. Yeah, I mean every country's got some talented people, right? Well, I mean I know they have talented people, but I didn't know they had their own. I didn't know they had TVs. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know other countries had things. Uh, you didn't know other countries had things. No, <laughs> I was waiting for you to react to that. You were just like, you're just like, yeah. And looking at whatever you're, are you looking at X Factor winners over here? What are you yeah, looking at? Yeah, I actually at? got an episode you of got X a Factor whole list. Plan. Yeah, I got a picture actually, picture. Hey, I don't know what you're doing on your commute this morning, but are you ready to learn about every winner of X Factor in the last 10 years? I have a family who put their houses on the line for me, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> What is that thing on your ankle? It's where I keep my Twizzlers. <laughs> Guilty person says what? What? Hey, take it away. Take That's away. it. Don't act like what you ate was salsa. Okay. <laughs> it is what? salsa. No, shut it's up. It's literally salsa. Shut your mouth. It says it on the can. Things I learned last night. Uh, anyways, so uh, Johnny John Rufo, Rufo, Johnny Rufo was on X Factor. Yeah, yeah. John Rufo, Rufo uh, different guy. Uh, so John Rufo, uh, he is uh, the perpetrator of the one of, if not the largest, uh, bank uh, uh, fraud in American history. Uh, he had uh, stolen. I want you to listen back to the sentence you said. Just when I'm imagining the moment, whenever this comes out. And you the just amount of and us, you say, is that what you're saying? Yeah, but also the word structure that you went with, where you said he's the perpetrator or one of the of the <laughs> biggest bank fraud in the United States. <laughs> like, if you cut out all the us, the sentence <laughs> still didn't make sense. <laughs> the so us make it make more sense. He defrauded you say the us. bank. Yeah, so he oh, oh it, not just the bank, all the banks. <laughs> Uh, just about every bank. Oh, the- <laughs> capital B bank. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Not the bank, the big the B big bank. bank. <laughs> the big big, the big B bank. <laughs> That's a church joke for, uh, uh, for uh, ex evangelicals. Really who listen. Funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, he had stolen from just about every bank you can think of. Um, if if they were One banking is in the mid nineties, uh, then he defrauded them. Uh, to the tune of a little over three hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, what is that tune sound? <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> That's what three. <laughs> you're telling me that three hundred and fifty million dollars is the Family Feud theme song. <laughs> it's Family Fraud. That <laughs> was fast. I'm really proud of you. Was, sorry, it's Family of uh, Fraud. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he robbed every bank. How? What? Uh, yeah. What is he just typing in Coke rewards points and <laughs> redeeming them for cash <laughs> in the nineties? I don't know. Uh, we'll get to that. But the more interesting part of the story is the fact that when he was convicted, uh, the so whole, he's caught. Spoiler. Yeah, he got caught. He's in court. He gets convicted, guilty. And the guards take him away into the back room, and they do guilty I don't know, whatever they in the do. courtroom. Yeah, yeah. Was and he then, in Steve Harvey's court? 
Have you seen Steve Harvey's show? I was only there because Family Feud. Uh, I was gonna yeah. say, I was like, I was gonna say, is it his show, Family Feud? No, it's Steve Harvey's <laughs> got a court show where he goes defense. Does he really? <laughs> He does have a he does have a court show. I was trying to combine <laughs> Family Feud and his court show. I had no idea he had a court and show. And he was going to go uh, <laughs> defense, prosecution. Give me one player from each side. <laughs> and then it's time to play fast guilty. It's not, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he does have a court show. It's pretty. Uh, we should get on it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Actually. Yeah, Ray and I've been trying to get on divorce court. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know how the shows work, they're all made they're up. All fake, yeah, 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 yeah. But we really want to go on divorce court. Yeah, that'd be great. What a great time! Um, can you imagine uh, the church people on come up to your shows and be like, "I saw that boy on an episode of Divorce Court." Yeah, well, it's better than cops. <laughs> you know, that stuff's real. <laughs> they're not casting for cops. <laughs> That's what you think. Uh, so. Uh, he got taken in away into the back room yeah. of court when, and whatever they do there. They, I don't know, put you in the orange suit and cuff you and oh, like he's been all the fi- the charges have been everything's happened. They yeah. tell them you're going to prison 17 years. He goes in the back room and now is the point where all of the uh, the judge and the jury and the executioner. They all party. <laughs> I don't know what they do. You don't know what happened. I've never been to a court like they this. all uh, pass around uh, cheesecake that's been sitting out for a little yeah, while. Celebratory you know, cheesecake. So it's kind of soggy. Little. Congrats, done. All right, yeah. Court well, is done, and the defense is not <laughs> celebrating. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. all angry. They're, they're really all upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all eating bologna. Scones. Old bologna. <laughs> Old bologna. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying in the American justice system. <laughs> Steve Harvey says, "All right, guys, let's play fast. Let's play fast. Guilty. All right. Guilty person says, "What? What? Hey, take it away. <laughs> take That's away. it. You uh, guys get to eat this old yeah. <laughs> prosecutor's cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Defense. Yeah, old baloney. <laughs> That's with his mustache. Well." <laughs> It gives they just do they pass it out by the slice? <laughs> yeah, they've got the little the little I don't know what you call it that little plastic. Cup I know thing that, that package. We in. all yeah. knew we were all there with the round bologna package. Yeah. And you just gotta nothing get else is packaged there. like bologna. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, so they take him in the back room and then everyone else his chilling. defense attorney. Yeah, uh, says excuse me, judge. Uh, uh, we had a uh, uh, a self surrender agreement, and the judge was like, excuse me. And he turns to the prosecution and he says, is this true? Do you guys have a self surrender agreement? Uh, and they were like, oh, yeah, we did do that. Uh, and Wait. so let me explain. Uh, so in certain cases, it's relatively common for uh, the the judge to grant a self surrender to the guilty party. Uh, Basically, what that means is they get to wear an ankle monitor for the next month or so to take care of their affairs and then report to prison for their sentencing. If you have a lengthy sentence or like a crime, like, I don't know, you stole $350 million from a from few every dozen bank. banks, um, then they usually don't let you do that because <laughs> they but say they, they the defense <laughs> negotiated this. So the defense, so the prosecution came to the defense early in the trial and asked for some documents. And the defense said that they would comply if they yeah they negotiated self, yeah that's how it they gave works. a self surrender agreement. A self surrender uh, is essentially in certain cases if uh, you have like a lighter sentence but you're going to have some prison time, they might grant you a self surrender to allow you to go handle your affairs before you're gone for a couple years. Sure, because you know, probably have some stuff to take care of, right? But if you have a lengthy sentence and you've done a serious crime like the robbing three hundred fifty million dollars worth typically of, doesn't happen. Yeah, they're typically like, yeah, you probably like if we let you go, you're going to be there's a risk. There. Yeah, yeah, and so they don't normally don't do that, but uh, the prosecution had arranged a deal with the defense early in this trial yeah. to get some documents uh, and in exchange for the documents they would grant and the way in court it works. It's a lot <laughs> like Pokemon cards. Yes, yeah, where it's like I'll give you these documents in exchange for I don't know letting my guy off scot-free <laughs> and they're like 
Uh, uh, but it's like it's like a, it's like when you buy a used car on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you got to negotiate, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, you get yeah, going yeah. hot, like, oh, I want him to not have any jail time at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and then so you're gonna be like, okay, well, hold on, we obviously can't just let him out scot free. <laughs> what if? What if we did twenty four years with? No possibility of a death penalty, and they're like, "Yeah, but we kind of want the you know, the risk. If there's no there's no chance of a death penalty, why even try the case?" You know? <laughs> what like, am I here for? Wait, are you the are you the defense? <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, but I want to know that my work matters. I want to know yeah, that I, I know save I'm saving someone. a life." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, what if he's got like a month? Yeah. After the sentence to. Just do whatever. Do what uh, to <laughs> handle his affairs. <laughs> How many affairs did this guy have going on at once? Are you a defense attorney? <laughs> you seem dumb. You know, you seem a uh, dumb. If I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Uh, so they granted it. They For have how long signed documentation. How long of a stay? Signed, signed documentation about a month. Um, uh, so he's had a 17 year sentence. He's going to have about a month where to he's going to wear 350 million. <laughs> and we're back to the age old debate. <laughs> if you had a month. <laughs> so he so uh, he has to wear an ankle monitor at the yeah. end of the month. He has to report back to prison to just live there for 17 years. Um, so it's like a rumspringer, right? Did Which you is the say? Amish have where they get to live. Oh, you know, <laughs> and we decide if they're gonna go back or not. Yeah, actually kind of uh, <laughs> except for monitored and you have to and you have to it's not well, a you don't have to because he didn't. Um, so he gets his ankle monitor. Uh, he goes and spends 30 days cuts his leg uh, off. <laughs> Sidebar: uh, Never tells his wife about the whole self surrender thing. Uh, oh, I thought about the whole her, thing. <laughs> never like even tells he was her. like, "Hey, I'm going to work," and then he's going to his trial. <laughs> like he never tells her that he stole all the money. Never tells her that he's gotten arrested and there's a trial and he might spend a lot of time well, in jail. What he's been telling her this whole time is that he's being like Ron. I'm a manager at Duncan, babe. I got to get up early. <laughs> you know those donuts don't make themselves. I got to get there at 4 a.m. <laughs> He says he's been wrongly convicted and yeah. they're fighting it. And so when he was at a sentence, they got hearing, the wrong guy. I'm the one <laughs> serving time. Well, the guy who really did it's on X factor <laughs> season three. <laughs> like how could this even be babe? And, and uh, he, he said out of his his sentencing trial was like an early trial. Like he just lied to her went to this trial where I mean if it didn't go his way, he was going to prison for 17 years right after it for all he right. knew. And he was like, yeah, I'm just going to go to trial. I'll be back this afternoon. Um, well, then he comes back and she thinks it's still an open trial. Like who knows what's going to happen uh, and with an ankle bracelet on though. Yeah, yeah, uh, and she didn't. She wasn't like yeah, what's that just, about. They're just like they want to keep a little better track of me. You know, like yeah. they want to know where he, he was like, oh, I saw this at the mall. There was one of those kiosks. The guy said my ankle looks weird. If I wear this, it would look less weird. Yeah, it's a balance <laughs> thing. It's like a, <clears throat> I'm going to go for I'm going to go on. A, I'm going to go on the run. I'm for a run. You remember um, <laughs> when I pulled my hamstring in football in high school? This is like it's supposed to help that. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, what they yeah. said. Yeah, it balances. Yeah, you know, you know, you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, the month goes by and uh, it's time. <laughs> it's time to report. And so he does it beep on the day. <laughs> <laughs> it in the like, morning goes doop, 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 doop. <laughs> Good morning. It's April 28th. Come back to prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's your prison day. <laughs> Happy prison day, John Rufo. <laughs> <laughs> Says his name and everything. <laughs> it's the Siri voice, though. But what year was this? This is the 90s. It's 98. Very primitive. <laughs> Very. Hello, John Rufo. <laughs> it is prison day. <laughs> prison. <laughs> ba da ba. Ba da ba ba ba. <laughs> Place the family feud. Theme it's like, is that family feud? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's ninety eight. Uh, he rents. Uh, he rents a car, and he asks. He tells his wife, "Hey, I want to take you to your chiropractor appointment. Normally, she would take the subway. They live in New York." And she's like, "I'll just take the subway." He's like, "I'm going to rent a car to drive and you to the chiropractor." He's like, he's like, "No, I'd like to drive you to the chiropractor." No, I just rented this car <laughs> to drive me to the chiropractor. Yeah, really passionate <laughs> about your spinal alignment. 
well, he told her that his car was in the shop, and he's like, he's like, I just really want to spend some extra time with you. Like, let me take you uh, to your chiropractor. So he does that and drops her off at the chiropractor, pulls by the Mar- U.S. Marshal's office. Um, it's a Saturday morning. There's like an attendant at the door, and he's like, hey, I'm supposed to get my ankle monitor off today. And the guy just does it, just takes his ankle monitor off and lets him go, doesn't ask any questions or what get ID or anything. It just gets his ankle monitor off and then no the, ID or anything. The last what do you think? Let me ask where you think the process should look like. Do you think he needs to give his ID? Yeah, you, I'm sure. Like, Let me I'm make sure. sure this is your ankle monitor. <laughs> I'm sure what happens is you come in and they have to check like look you up and be like, oh, are you supposed to get this off? What, what was his plan like if they did do that? Like if he just went to the US Marshal office and he was like, I got to take this off today and they were like, Bro, you got to go to jail. You got to go to prison, man. (laughs) I don't know what his plan was. I don't know, Um, but I've got a feeling I do know actually, and we'll get to that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do know. (laughs) And then I've always known. (laughs) (laughs) And then he goes to the bank, uh, one of the banks he defrauded, uh, and we get our last video that anybody's ever captured of John Rufo. Oh, first of all, saw the creepy faces in the yeah, background. That's him. <laughs> okay, this is an ATM photo. He pulls out six hundred dollars from the ATM, and at the end of this video, he actually looks up at the camera and smiles at it. And it's the last time anyone's ever seen John Rufo. No um, way. And uh, hours later, he was supposed to report to jail. Obviously, didn't. His wife's just at the chiropractor. Yeah, she's getting aligned, and uh, she has no idea he's supposed to be at prison that day. And so she actually gets a phone call from the FBI and they're like screaming at him at her trying to figure out, hey, where's your husband? And he's like, she's like, I don't know. He went to work after he dropped me off at the chiropractor. Did you check the Duncan on 53rd? (laughs) That's where he told me he goes every day. Uh, And so uh, they ended up investigating and a couple days later they found that rental car in one of the extended lots at JFK and to this. So with this money. Yeah. He boarded a flight, <clears throat> presumably, somewhere to anywhere. He had six hundred dollars. Can in you buy a plane ticket with cash? Yeah, I think so. Especially back then, you could. You well, know, back then you could. Yeah. I'm saying, I think so can now. Can you now? I think so now. I don't know why you couldn't. It's money. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm thinking this is why you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm sure you can. I don't. I don't see why they could. I mean, I see why they might want to not, but I don't see how they could legally say no. You can't buy this with cash. Like that. That doesn't make sense to me. I okay. mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. You know. But anyways, uh, <clears throat> they found that car at that lot, and it that was 1998. And to this day, no one has any idea where John Rufo went. Um, the FBI. He's on the FBI's 15 most wanted list, um, and uh, they still haven't found him. But like. How is he making it? <laughs> There's a lot of questions there. There's theories. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Uh, if you like our show, make sure to leave a podcast review in whatever platform you use, or if you're on YouTube, drop a comment. Uh, if you want to listen to another episode, my favorite right now is Jose Canseco. Uh, it's this guy in the MLB who really brought steroids mainstream for the sport and did a lot of other just absolutely insane stuff and there might be a little bit of aliens in it. So check that episode out. It's one of my favorites, but thanks for being here. Let's, let's look at the backstory. I think we need to start with the backstory. Okay, so John Rufo. Where's his wife now uh, in? I don't know. New York or something. Probably still. She's just she's stranded at the chiropractor. <laughs> she's been stuck at the chiropractor for well, 20. I'm years. thinking of that day. All right, so he just leaves his wife at the chiropractor. Yeah. Goes to the U.S. Marshal Office. They take off his ankle monitor. Yeah. Goes to JFK. Yeah. Long term parking. Yeah. Which they never check, by the way. Yeah. And then your car is not safe at long term parking. No. Mm-hmm. And then dips out. Yeah. With the six hundred dollars cash. Yep. And which he probably used most of that on his flight. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm wondering. He didn't have access to the three hundred fifty million. Uh, There's theories. There's theories. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, let's look. Let's look at the backstory. Right. So he was born in Brooklyn in 1954. Uh, wait, how did I say that before? Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> no, it was the Bronx. The Bronx. The uh, Bronx. Brooklyn's the same. Brooklyn. Uh, so he was born in Brooklyn in <laughs> 1954. 
Uh, and you saw that picture of him. Uh, he's uh, the best way to describe him is George Costanza. Uh, <laughs> he's got look at his eyes, dude. Yeah, he's got male pattern. Looks like he mace. had pink eye when he came to this thing. <laughs> you know what he looks like? He looks like a cop in my hometown. <laughs> you know, just like I imagine a police officer yeah. in a town of three thousand people with zero crime. A former coworker of his described him as. Um, he's kind of like a computer nerd, and the thing with most computer nerds is once you get to know them, like at first they're kind of awkward and uncomfortable, but once you get to know them, they're actually kind of nice guys. But not John Rufo. He was really rude and awkward the whole time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's got male pattern baldness, little mustache, uh, and uh, he's short. Is this the picture they use for the most wanted guy. list? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Anyways, so he uh, was a, a computer nerd his whole life. Loved computers um, from an early age. Uh, and when after he got married, he married his high school sweetheart. After he got married, he started a computer services company uh, okay. called CCS, uh, which stood for Cemetery Computer Services, um, <laughs> because uh, they were deals so good you'll die. Uh, that's not Shut true. Up. <laughs> Uh, no, because his first his first client was a cemetery. They digitized all of their paperwork, um, which was really early to do that. Yeah, like they were yeah, yeah, yes, early nineties um, doing that. And over the course of the next few years, they kind of blew up doing this for a lot of clients. Um, and he got to the point where uh, he made a relationship with IBM and became an IBM reseller of IBM computers. Okay, um, and kind of his big break that really exploded his company uh, was he made a deal with Philip Morris, uh, which you may know from popular brands like Marlboro or uh, just about every brand of cigarette actually and jewel. Um, uh, they do it all. Uh, so a very, very large company, especially in that time. That was before we realized cigarettes were yeah, really bad. That was when we were allowed to have cartoon camels be like, hey kids, why don't yeah. you try smoking? Yep, exactly. Actually, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, massive company made a deal with him to supply all of their computers for the whole company. Wow. And so it was a huge deal. Um, and he was uh, just reselling IBM to them forever. Yeah. Uh, while doing that deal, he made a relationship with a guy named Ed Reiners, uh, who was a uh, executive at Philip Morris, um, who uh, they hit it off, became really close friends. Um, and Everybody described it as a very odd relationship. They couldn't figure out why Ed and uh, John became friends because Ed, um, he is your stereotypical, like, college frat bro turned Wolf of Wall Street. Cool like, guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not just like the, <coughs> not cool, but like the, like, thinks he's cool. Like, womanizer, douchey. Yeah. Like, drives a convertible. Super rich, like, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Full of himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, works out eight times a day, right? Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. But for some reason, him and John became like best friends. And John was like the opposite of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, eats. Yeah, it's like us. <laughs> <laughs> One of us is like rich and hot and works out every day and is just rich, and the other one is. Um, uh, married, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. What, what do you have going works for on you? computers every day works on computers every day uh, for eats, now eat salsa for lunch. No, uh, don't act like what you <laughs> ate was salsa. Okay, <laughs> it is what? Salsa. No, shut it's up. Literally salsa. shut your mouth. It says it on the can. What Tim ate for lunch. Where's my camera? What <laughs> Tim ate for lunch today, and this is what he's eaten since. I don't know. We were in, this is a college person thing to eat. Tim buys 25 cent cans. Are they still 25 cents? Has inflation gotten nah, to yeah, they're like 72 now? Yeah, so little cans of uh, tomato sauce and uh, I say tomato sauce. I mean, it's like it's just tomato sauce uh, with a little bit of spice in it. What's it called? El Pato El Pato stands and for the duck. Yeah, El Pato tomato <laughs> sauce Mexican hot style, right? It's so kosher good. though. Look at you. It's so uh, and then he takes all the bottoms of every can are rusty like that too. brand. Like they straight come up. Rusty. They really are though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then he uh, he just pours that into a bowl mm -hmm. and then uh, takes nacho cheese Doritos <laughs> and then dips those nacho cheese Doritos and eats that food. I'm telling and you. And then he comes in here and he goes, Ugh, I don't know why I feel crappy 24 <laughs> 7. 
I don't know why. I, sorry, let me say this again. I don't know why. Uh, uh, I feel crappy to, uh, 24-7. Okay, first of all. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I feel terrible all the time. Go to go to your local Walmart. They will have it in stock. It's in uh, where all of your international foods are in that aisle. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be you'll find it. They've got three different flavors. Yellow's the best. Um, yellow's not a flavor. <laughs> you can't say flavor. yellow's the best. <laughs> yellow's the best. You can get like four cans for less than four dollars. And then go bag. You used to be able to get four <laughs> cans for a dollar. <laughs> you used to. When we were in college, you would go buy those. You had, a, you had a, your closet at Evangel was full of these. It was. It was. I constantly. Our pantry had, when we lived together had. I usually had about twenty on hand. Yeah. Now I have about ten. Um, <laughs> Progress. Same price. Uh, but and then go get yourself a family size bag of Doritos, and sit down and eat that. It, Feel it what you just said. So Listen to what you just <laughs> said. That's a that's a that's a, a bit that I used to have where I'm like, yeah, I knew I was overweight because I always ate things and everything I ate said family size on it. That's a that's a I was four <laughs> pounds, dude. Once you ate, and then for dessert, just eat a dozen cupcakes. You're not gonna live forever. I'm just nobody's gonna live forever. You're not either. You gotta uh, die of something. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, go go buy some, eat it. It'll change your life. It's not bad, but it's not it's worth very good. doing extra work. If you're going out of your way to do this, don't. It's great. It's so good. Give it a try. Uh, it's part of Tim Stone's Get Well Quick Trick. Yeah, there you go. And if you go to elpato.com <laughs> slash Tillin, you can use promo code the yellow one. What are you doing right now? I'm emailing them. <laughs> You're emailing El Pato. Yeah, they don't check their email. Look at their rusted cans. I don't think. Dude. I don't think. I don't, I don't think they have email. <laughs> they have an email. Send them it's a not, hard letter. It's not El Pato dot com. El Pato is the brand name. Their company. I don't know if you can see it on here. I can't remember the name of the company. I follow them on Instagram. Why? Because I love it. It's really, really good. Okay. Yeah, I don't know the brand. Name. I follow them on Instagram. The only account I follow. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this guy uh, Ed Reiner's and him become really good friends, uh, and everybody thought it was for some was, reason was odd. Yeah. Um, well, come to find out, uh, Ed got fired from Philip Morris, um, and so he was hanging out at the office with John, and they were working on a new business idea together. Oh, so Ed did not work there. Well, he did work at. Philip he Morris. used to, but he got fired. He got fired. And then he was just hanging out as if he worked there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like him, him and John Rufo started working on a new you business idea. <laughs> yeah, I work here. Yeah, no, you don't. I mean, I I'm here every day working. What are you talking about? Yeah, You've work here. seen me. Yeah, you see me here every day. <laughs> uh, so uh, do you they, think you do that at McDonald's? Do you think you could do you think you could do that? Like McDonald's would be a lot harder. They have uniforms. Yeah. Find a place that doesn't have uniforms. It has to be like relatively large. Like I feel like the smallest Place could be like a Walmart type place. That's true. Like it would have to be a place where it's like you might not know every employee. You know, like you probably see them around, but like you might not. You might just assume, oh hey, that's just a new guy. You know. Okay. But like at a, like McDonald's, I don't think there's there's enough people on a shift. And it's too tight tight quarters. I think. Okay, probably. Give it a shot. Let us know how it goes. I'll do. Um, it. <clears throat> uh, so. Uh, they start looking working on this new business idea that was going to be this computer software platform. They like had all these ideas for it, but they didn't start like actually working on it. Right. They just were like brainstorming this idea, um, and they thought it was kind of crazy. They're like, "This idea, kind of crazy." Uh, <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> but, they, were, they were known <laughs> around the office as. Uh, they called it Project Star, uh, uh, and so what they were do what they started doing is they would go. Um, uh, to all these different banks um, to pitch the idea um, okay. to try to get a loan to get Project Star off the ground, right? Um, what was Project Star? Uh, let me double check. Hold on, give me one second. Projectstar.com slash Tillin. <laughs> Project Star was this idea for, okay, imagine a yearbook, but it's online, right? <laughs> 
And what if you could look up old classmates and you could see if they were married, mm -hmm. single? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, we want to make high school reunions obsolete. <laughs> That's our mission. Uh, so I was wrong. It wasn't. It had nothing to do with software. Uh, <laughs> it's a barbecue place. Uh, you know, <laughs> close. Uh, they were trying to produce smokeless cigarettes. Oh, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, and so uh, they were gonna go back to Philip Morris and uh, 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 like a vape pen. Kinda. Uh, uh, yeah. Kind or of. they were just trying to figure out how to make cigarettes less cancerous to have people around them. I think maybe more like that. Okay. I think maybe that was more the idea. I think because because I think around then like you started having this like there was this new trend of hey smoking is really bad for everybody. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they were trying to get ahead of that. And so there were cigarettes that weren't going to have any smoke. Um, crazy idea. I don't know how that would ever work. And they're, they're going to the bank, right? At that time, they were still smoking in the bank. I'm like, look at this. You look can't even see this. my face right now. Yeah, all yeah. this smoke. Don't your eyes burn? <laughs> yeah. That's why his eyes are red in that picture. Uh, so they they went to this bank. They pitched the idea, and they got a $13 million loan off of it. Like the bank was like, this is a great idea. Um, and they walked out of that that meeting saying, that went way better than we thought it was going to go. Um, well, yeah. We expected $3,000. <laughs> we expected them to say, this is a stupid idea. This is never going to work. Um, and they, they got, walked out with thirteen million. They walked out with a thirteen million dollar loan uh, to start this business. Uh, and so instead of starting the business, they just started spending all the money, um, not on business stuff, on limos and partying and all this stuff uh, during the workday. So he's supposed to be working. John and Ed go to a club and drink and party and all that stuff. And then club during the daytime. Yeah, and then that is rough. Five o'clock hits and they go home. He goes and home. They're to like his all middle right, class America house. Time to and go back to my wife. Watches the new episode of Seinfeld. Time to go wife. back to my high school sweetheart. <laughs> hey, wait, babe. Long day at Duncan. Tell you what. <laughs> Duncan was crazy. And today. he's just drunk. <laughs> and he's like, so I, drunk. I can't even stand. I it was such an exhausting. Day. I got to sit down. I'm so dizzy. I, hey. <clears throat> and you sit down. <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't. I need you to sit down. You should, you should sit down. You know, you are sitting down. <laughs> you are literally sitting down right now. I sit down. <laughs> You're sitting down already. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, so the uh, uh, <coughs> there's they're blowing all this money. Oh yeah, and then thirteen million dollars, and, and the bank's like, hey, you gotta pay that back. Yeah, the the then they get a bill. For a thirteen million dollar loan, like their first payment, they're like, "Oh, that's a lot of money." Uh, so they go and they say, "Let's get another loan. Let's go pitch this to another bank." And they did it, and they started just paying every other bank with another loan, and they just yeah. started going down the line. She's so floating thirteen million around. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, it totals over three hundred fifty million dollars worth of loans that they got from dozens of banks all across Manhattan, um, because apparently everybody, like, apparently they were really good at pitching this. Uh, like apparently they had created a great, but I mean if you pay off deck, one of them, you're only owing thirteen million dollars. Well, it wasn't the concept. What was happening oh, but was they, they were weren't paying going, off. That makes sense. That makes yeah. Sense. They were yeah. going and spending, and then they were just paying the the, each the minimums, bill, the minimums as they were coming through. <laughs> with, you're making a minimum payment on a thirteen million dollar <laughs> loan, and then they were just living crazy lives. And they're like, you know what? Don't we worry about it. The government's gonna forgive all this debt eventually. <laughs> they have to. They have to. Yeah, what are they gonna do? It's three hundred fifty million dollars. Fifty million dollars. <laughs> like, what are they gonna do? What, what are they, they gonna, gonna do? About do? It? They can't stop us. I work at Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna say? You gonna pay us three hundred fifty million dollars? Yeah. I'm never gonna have that much. What money. are they gonna say? We'll just get a loan. <laughs> we'll just get another loan. Hey, <laughs> smoke with cigarettes. You know exactly where I'm going. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, hold on, hold on, you know exactly where I'm going. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, you ready? Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> if we're thinking the same thing, this is going to be beautiful. If not, it's going to be really weird. Okay, one second. One second. We got to turn the sound up. All right, you ready? Mm hmm.
Oh, sharks. <laughs> I named it. I'm looking for $350 million. <laughs> hey, we I love that you got it from. <laughs> It was, a, it was a tell. It was a good tell. Oh, it was it was so good. It was a good setup. <laughs> Hello, sharks. <laughs> We're looking for three hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> it's a small donation. Uh, so, uh, here's the thing about when you take out three hundred fifty million dollars from dozens of banks across yeah. Manhattan. The FBI Did says. Talk. The, well, the FBI says, "Huh? I wonder what they're doing." Let's take a look. Mm. So they got audited, um, and the FBI Does was the like, FBI do that or was the IRS? I don't know. Or the CIA? I don't or know. Or the DIA? Or the DEA? Or the, or the <laughs> FDA? <laughs> or <laughs> or the NCAA? <laughs> <laughs> or the WNBA? <laughs> Or the WWF, <laughs> or the KY three. <laughs> <laughs> because we care. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so we're uh, off track. Uh, so this is what they try to do to the FBI. <laughs> the FBI is like FBI. <laughs> you mean FDA? FDA. And they just try to like <laughs> they try to pass around. Yeah, they're trying no, to. No, we're the it. FBI. We're here to ask about the three hundred fifty million dollars. <laughs> Hello. Hello, FBI. <laughs> Hello, FBI. <laughs> okay, so the FBI is like, well, hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah. Your cigarettes are still smoking. <laughs> yeah, those are some pretty smoky cigarettes you're smoking right there. Uh, so uh, they get audited and they both get convicted, um, arrested, I should say. They both get arrested. <clears throat> um, but they're, I mean, they're, they're both putting their names on this. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, they both get put up on a $10 million bail, uh, which is like, which they're like, pull it from the account. <laughs> like, hey, could I get like two days? I just need to go to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they get put up on, on $10 million bails, um, and uh, Ed doesn't have anybody who can pay it. So nobody pays that $10 million for Does Ed. John? So Ed gets stuck in there. John Who does John no John's family goes and they said we can't get 10 million, but they came to the judge. John's and they family said, goes to the bank and they're like, we've got an idea <laughs> for smokeless cigarettes. They get $13 million. All right, they go pay his bail. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then with the other three, they start a business This is like real life. Have you watched? Did you watch uncut gyms? <clears throat> Uh, no, I did. uncut gyms. The whole movie is he's just paying off one debt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with Borrow money from another wow. person, you know, and it's just like a fast bit. Like it's yep. all in that little. It's just anxiety the whole time. Yeah, it's so stressful. But that's what this. That's what this is. That's what they're yeah. doing. They were just borrowing yep. more to borrow more. Mm -hmm. Well, his family they uh, they have no idea that John's doing this. Mm -hmm. His family, and so his wife, who he's been married for seventeen years, he's like, uh, goes. Well, they just arrested me for no reason. Yeah, I went to work at Duncan today. Yeah, will uh, you pull out money from my four hundred one k? So John's wife goes to their family and they come to the judge and they said, hey, we can't give you $10 million, but what if we offer up our, our houses, firstborn. all of our homes as collateral? Oh. So they put up his and his wife's home. They put up his parents home. They put up his parent like his wife's parents home and his aunt and uncle and two sets of her aunt and uncle's homes. Um, so it was nowhere near 10 million, but it was enough homes where the judge was like, Okay, if he was going to skip bail on this, there's like, enough people who are going to lose like, their homes that they're going to find him. <clears throat> yeah, and also it's like that's his mom and his mother-in-law and his anybody wife. who would help him. Yeah, skip bail. Yeah, these are all like the closest people to him. Yeah, and so 
it's pretty unlikely that he's willing to screw this many people. And even if he is, like, they're the most likely people like, that would help or be able to find him. So they, they allowed him to come out on bail, um, which was pretty unusual. And well, Ed was like, me, me too? <laughs> Like, and no, Ed. Yeah, they were like, Ed, you don't have a family. Everybody who loves you left you because you suck. Yeah, I have a family. <laughs> I have a family who put their houses on the line for me, <laughs> and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's good. That's good. Hey, thank you again for listening to this episode. Making sure that you don't miss one in the future. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast, whether that be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. You'll get an alert when we drop a new episode. And if you want more, if you want something a week early, you want to be part of our Discord, more access to us as creators, uh, you can support this show on Patreon. It helps us go a long way. Nothing that we're doing is possible without our Patreon supporters. If you want more information about that, please text Tillin to 66866. Thank you so much for being here. So John gets out on bail. Yeah. Um, and while he's out on bail is when they make this deal for the mm -hmm. self-surrender. Um, <clears throat> so fast forward the story, goes to prison or gets How convicted. How long between arrest and uh, that uh, trial was this whole process? Do we know? Because um, Ed's in, in jail the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually, I think, is still in jail. Um, we uh, could get him out. <laughs> They go run through the woods in Tennessee. <laughs> you can make it to the Barkley Marathon. <laughs> then you can have your freedom. <laughs> what if that's what the Barkley Marathon was? It's all the prisoners from that prison. Yeah, and it's like anybody who makes it to the end gets. No, free. hey, you're treading on some real dystopian nightmare <laughs> stuff. So maybe. <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, it was uh, a long time. Uh, I think he got arrested in '96. And ninety eight was when that yeah. conviction happened. That's so what I, think I was, it was wondering. A long, like, a long period, uh, and so uh, he leaves, and uh, the FBI is trying to figure out where he is. The marshal is trying to figure out where he is. No one knows. On His bail, he doesn't know. No, this is after. This is after after, after okay, the okay, conviction, okay, okay, okay. and he fly, flies somewhere. Um, Allegedly. Yeah. Well, they're trying to figure out where he went, um, and uh, they have. Like nothing to go off of. No leads. Because I and even the family has no idea. The family's not not helping. And so um they had to do the the FBI did the only thing they could think of which was the only collateral they had, and they seized all those homes. So his wife, both of his sets his parents, his in laws, his aunt and uncle, and then her, two sets of her aunt and uncles, all had their homes seized because they said, Well, maybe if we do this, he'll come back and be like, I can't put. Okay, so imagine, dollars. I'm saying imagine an aunt and uncle, right? Yeah. Imagine that you've worked your whole life, all right? Because yeah, all these people are elderly at this point. They're, I'm saying retired. we worked our whole lives. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my brother's kid, wife, my brother's my, kids, my brother's daughter's husband is an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you like I barely homework. know him. I see him at Thanksgiving every once in a while. Sure, and I don't like. I don't like. He's weird. I don't like. Him. Right? Yeah, he's weird. Yeah, kind of rude. I, I, how <laughs> I would describe him is he's like a computer nerd, you know. And sometimes you meet him and you're like, this guy's kind of nice, uh, but he's just not, you know. <laughs> and he kind of sucks. But like, we really love her. She's our niece, you yeah. know. And so, I mean, I guess there's guess no we'll way he would really mess us up this much and take yeah. our home. And then the government shows up at your house and is like, hey, and yeah, yeah. Turns out, you know how you thought he sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he does. does. Turns out he really does. So yeah, and they uh, the the police just showed up and was like, "Hey, you guys are moving." Yeah, and they're just like, "Yep, give us this house." <laughs> yeah, they literally they like showed up and they said, "Hey, you guys have an hour. You're moving." Uh, and then they changed the locks and like that stresses it's me. So out. sad, and, and to me, like I don't know that that part of the story frustrates the heck out of me because it's like. 
I don't know. Like I know that that was the case and technically that's the that's agreement. The rules. You knew what you were signing up for. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like there comes a point where like you just kind of have to be a human and say as, as when you're the judge, like you gotta be like, yeah, like these people didn't do anything wrong. John did. <laughs> well, but you don't know if any of these people are helping him be gone. I think at this point they knew that they didn't because because like they've taken them all in for questioning. They've done all this like they've they've sure. done all their leads. I think at this point they knew. But if he's still got access to all this money. <laughs> yeah, well, OK, so they did. Uh, they were able to collect at the point of his arrest um, about three hundred and like thirty eight million dollars. Yeah, uh, so there was about 17 million that was unaccounted for. Um, so they probably spent a lot. Yeah, um, but there's probably still some other money that they uh, don't have a paper trail for which we can get to that. I, I guess maybe now's a good time for some theories. Uh, there's five <laughs> theories about what happened. Oh my to John gosh. Trump. Okay. Um, first, uh, he left a suicide note on his dining room table when he left. Um, the problem with the suicide note, note though, is that uh, his wife doesn't believe it. <laughs> uh, she said it was it was super cold and like and even like some like psychologists have read it and said that this doesn't check out as a suicide. Yeah, note. someone who this is a like you're covering up for. Yeah, you're trying to make everyone think you killed yourself um, because like <clears throat> he it's very cold. He says he reached his breaking point, um, but then other than that, he says he like he had no choices. Uh, just understand like this is me beating them um, and he decided to give himself to God, but didn't say anything about like the relationship like didn't a lot of a lot of didn't mention Ed. Didn't mention had a lot of them. A lot of times in suicide notes, people will apologize for yeah, making it. Really like he didn't did apologize. This. Like it was just he's doing this to beat the like, government. Yeah, I'm gone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like I am out of here. So don't uh, bother looking for me. <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna I find me because I'm dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. So nobody believes that. Not even his wife. Um, the next big theory is that he's just hiding out in plain sight. Um, that he's living somewhere in the country and probably had changed his appearance a little bit. You were going Duncan after this <laughs> and it's just kind of living his life. They say now he'd be 67 um, and he's just trying to blend into the crowd these days. I mean, that would make probably sense. Probably took a few million dollars and is living off of that cash money um, and is just. I mean, if you needed to disappear and you shaved and then just gained 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. You would yeah. not be yeah. as recognizable. Shave your head, like shave a shave whatever facial hair you have, go to the plastic surgeon or just hit yourself in the face with a brick a few times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, like yeah. just break your nose, That's cut off one of your do, ears. Uh, is they brick <laughs> themselves in the face. Uh, but here's here's the interesting part about this. Uh, this will sound familiar to you uh, because a few years ago in 2016 uh, the U.S. Marshals received a tip that someone thought they spotted him uh, at an L.A. Dodgers game. Uh, what? No way. And there is a video from the game. He was in the second row behind home plate. Uh, a man who looks similar oh, yeah. to him. Yeah, to really what tell. he would look like if he was <clears> older. You know, <laughs> really tell. The, he looks like a hit in the face of the brick in this picture. <laughs> You know, I love they blurred this guy's face like it makes a difference as if it wasn't you know? already super. They were like, blurry. here's a super blurry photo. Uh, let's really make sure that no one identifies this guy. That actually the other guy was holding up like a little. Plate this looks in front like of his face. they took a picture of their TV on the Nokia phone. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. He was there was no shot where someone this looks in. like a picture you'd look at and you'd be like, yeah, there's a face there like where you would show somebody like there's a ghost. You see it's a face. You see the face mm -hmm. like that's what this looks that's like the guy. Well, uh, <clears throat> they ended up contacting the Dodgers figuring out what seat that was and who purchased that seat uh, and they found that guy and the FBI went and uh, they got him to agree to get fingerprinted and so he got fingerprinted the issue was it wasn't a match. So this guy, while he looks a lot like him, he doesn't. You can't. Know, I don't know if he does or not. <laughs> I mean, look at this. He kind of looks like him. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And look at that. He kind of oh, looks like him. Yeah. Like he looks like if someone went to Party City and got a John Rufo mask. 
like you know, like you you know those really baggy like JFK masks, like or Nixon masks. Like that's what this looks like. Like you, if you want to look like this, guy. if you're watching the LA Dodgers game and there's someone wearing a Nixon mask behind home plate, though, you know. Yeah, I thought I'd be like, that's John Rufo. The mask mandate is still in effect. I gotta, I have to wear this. Um, yeah. So that that lead came up empty, but there's been a long running theory that he's just out here somewhere in the country, just living off cash. Yeah, and laying low. Um, obviously far away from his family and friends and everyone who ever knew him. Um, so LA would check out because he always lived. What in if he's Brooklyn one of the police life. officers in Mount Vernon <laughs> where I was like, he looks like a cop in Mount Vernon. You know, well, uh, I'm Brad. I'm Brad. I'm glad <laughs> I'm Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brad. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because there's a picture of him that has sparked a lot of controversy uh, of him with the FBI and to his uh, left right there. He's holding the gun very it's, inappropriately too. Well, to the left of him right there is the assistant it's, director of the FBI. That's the the blurry face next to him. Yeah, who was also sitting next to him at the Dodgers <laughs> game. <laughs> Same blurry face. Everyone's face is blurred. <laughs> he's holding that gun. Is that a gun? He's holding. That's a gun. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not holding that well. Yeah. He's got that up there like he he's got his finger kind of on the shot. trigger. Yeah. yeah, like he's never held a gun before. <laughs> That's that's not him. That's him. That's him. That's Was he him. in the FBI? No. Uh, what is this? So this is a very interesting thread. Um, John will tell you, and he was uh, rather open with selling his computers. But he was rather open with his coworkers that he had a government contract that he worked on, and it was highly secretive. Um, and he would tell all of his employees. Uh, is the conspiracy that the FBI helped him get away? So he would tell all of his employees. He would say, "Hey, I'm going to be working on this government contract. Please do not." Project Duncan. Me. And he would close <laughs> close his office door, and he'd be in there for hours working on this. That's the that's the be, like. Of course, that's what you would do. Is you go, yeah. "Hey guys, <laughs> I'm working on nobody come over here. Secret. I'm working on very secret <laughs> things. <laughs> I'm working on super secret government documents. Uh, when Ed shows up with two women, they are with the FBI." Don't say anything. Just let them in. Don't say anything. <laughs> Don't say a word. Uh, yeah, uh, but he he talked. He was pretty open with the fact that he worked on a very secretive government contract, and he would let things slip a lot to say that like the work he did was like saving us from nuclear oblivion in the Cold War. Um, which, yeah, if it's true, we don't know. But what we do know is that the well, FBI do does have documents that they is that did. His tie is the same pattern as a hotel conference room. <laughs> the carpet you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that is that is. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, well, the uh, the, the FBI, FBI does like, have record of working with him. Oh, um, okay. What they what the records say, though, is that it was um, minor computer work. That he's obviously with them. What is unusual, though, is if he was working on some minor computer projects, why does he have a picture with the assistant director of the FBI? And yeah. why did they let him hold a gun in the picture? Yeah, I don't know why. When they, he clearly doesn't know how to hold it. Doesn't gun. know how to hold a gun. Um, with pointing like, it straight up with his finger in the trigger. Yeah, and he's got the tack team. Like they've got like this is an, a serious FBI team. Is there a full picture of this? Yeah, there. I mean, there's more people in the picture. I, I, I want to see if, the context if it's possible. Um, yeah, let me see. This is obviously this is zoomed in. Yeah, let me see if I can get that. And is that how tall the assistant director is? <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously sitting down for the listeners. <laughs> this is because of Jim Jam. <laughs> yeah, he does look like a freaking look how big his eye sockets look in that picture. <laughs> He's wearing sunglasses, I hope. <laughs> if not, he's got two big dark circles for eyes. Holy cow, man. Looks like a little Goblin. So yeah, so the theory uh, here is that they helped him. He did something for the FBI. Yeah, he was like, "I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine." Yeah, and so they helped him. They helped him He's get like, out. Let Ed take the fall for it. Take mm -hmm. my aunt and uncle's house. Yeah, well, yeah. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> but he knows the assistant director. Uh, well, a picture with somebody doesn't mean they know them. But yes, I mean, yeah, that's true. Uh, but anyways, uh, 
So I have to keep making that distinction because you see how many politicians get destroyed from people who are like, oh, look, he's got pictures with this person and it's <laughs> like, yeah, but if someone comes to my show and takes a picture with me and then does something insane. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean that, that doesn't like, mean like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just took a picture with them, but I mean like I don't know like how often are how often does the system like, director here, of the FBI have an say, FBI hat? Yeah, and take a picture with us. Hold my gun. Like, like it's it's unusual. It doesn't seem like something you would do for just some guy who did some computer work for your agency. It is a little odd that he. Yeah, but computers was new. It was a new thing. Maybe I don't, I don't know. know. I I think it's I think it's odd that he got this picture, given the work that the FBI says sure. he did. Um, if he did something closer, I bet I'm sure he embellished. But I, if he did something closer to what he said, it would make more sense that he got this picture. But if all he did was sell him some computers and set them up for him, to me that makes no sense. Like mm. why he would have this picture. Um, but anyway, so the theory is that the FBI helped him get off with it because there is that missing money. Yeah. Um, and if he does know the director of the FBI, just paid it off. Yeah. Like, hey, I'll cut you. Yeah, I'll cut you seven million dollars if you make me disappear. And the FBI would know how to do that. Um, I'm sure they do it all the time. Uh, they help people disappear. I don't know if they help people disappear, but they make them disappear. Mm. You know, they can say you don't exist anymore. Have fun in New Mexico. Uh, <laughs> John Rufo, <laughs> or should I say John Ralphio? <laughs> Have fun in Indiana. What are uh, the other theories? We got two more. Yeah. So the next theory is that the Russians are hiding him. Oh, uh, so similar. It always comes back. To <laughs> so this was uh, Cold War era. Uh, this this was end of Cold War era. Right. But uh, there was a it, this <laughs> uh, uh, when he was working with the FBI. There is a storyline uh, that he had worked with the Russians. Uh, like what he was supposed to be doing for the FBI was uh, he was doing it for Russia to take Russia down. Oh. Like he was he was a double agent for Russia mm. um, and there was an interesting uh, segment in the story because his employees retell that there was a moment when he was working on that government contract when there was a set of two people who had desks from the government that were working with them, but they said that he, they both those people had very thick Russian accents, and they both wore holsters on their ankles with guns in them, and they wouldn't talk to anyone. I'm glad you clarified guns, <laughs> holsters <laughs> on their ankles, ankles for with Twizzlers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. One guy just really was a big snacker, a you know, huge reaching down, Twizzler guy. gobstoppers <laughs> down there, you know. Uh, so. Um, and they wouldn't talk to anyone. They would just come in, do their work all day, and leave. And they had their little little guns, um, but they had thick Russian accents. And so okay. the theory is that he was a double agent, and he had ties to Russia. And Russia saved him. Yeah. And they shipped him off to Russia, and they said, "You're one of us now." Say goodbye to John Rufo. You're now John Russia. You're <laughs> okay. Uh, and the evidence for this is a picture. Uh, if you're an audio listener, you can't see it on the screen right now, but it's John Rufo and Putin next to each other. <laughs> um, so in front of a burning building, it's uh, it's they are. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It goes hard. Oh, man. Uh, so both shirtless for some reason. <laughs> yeah, clearly not their torso. Yeah, yeah. Photoshopped. <laughs> uh, uh, the other theory is that he moved to Italy with help from the mafia. Uh, I was going to wonder if the mafia was going to be involved. Yeah, yeah, he is Italian. He yeah, because he would pay a, them off pretty easy. He comes from Italian descent, but it's more than that. Uh, his barber was Italian, and actually, uh, a few years after John disappeared, his barber moved back home to Italy. Uh, also, uh, his office, John Rufo's office, uh, was in the same building of uh, this restaurant where a uh, famous uh, mob boss. By the name of Paul Costello, uh, was gunned down in this office or in that restaurant, uh, yeah. like very famously, while uh, John Rufo still worked there. Uh, and so some people think that he might have been connected to that because employees said that all day, even prior to the event, he was acting very erratic um, that day as if. He knew what was going to happen that day. Like he's walking around yeah. the office and be like, oh, something's going down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like like they hear these tires screech and he's like, turn on the news. And then they hear all the shots. And it's like, 
would you, would you know something Hold on. happening here? It seems like, uh, so, so there's theories that he was connected to the mob. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all theories. And the idea is that the mob helped ship him off to Italy. Yeah. Um, the, no, we already covered this one. The ad, oh, that was the, the FBI. My bad. The addition, Same thing. <laughs> the addition to this one that makes it a little bit more credible is his wife said that during that month where he was supposed to self-surrender before he self-surrendered. Um, he said that she said there was one time that made me think maybe he was planning on doing something weird. And it was for dinner. He said, <laughs> can we have lasagna? <laughs> and I was like, you never ask for this. He said, I just want to try it. I just want to. I want, I've always wondered. I just want the lasagna. <laughs> I wondered what life would be like if all I ate was lasagna. <laughs> Before I go to prison, <laughs> maybe I don't know. The trial hasn't happened the yet. The trial is still pending. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what is that thing on your ankle? It's where I keep my <laughs> Twizzlers. <laughs> so his wife, his wife said that what he one time he just randomly was like, "Hey, uh, what if we moved to Italy?" And she was and like, she's like, he's probably in Italy <laughs> because one time he was like, what if we moved to Italy? Well, no, it was during this period yeah. before he left. Oh, and yeah, dude. if I disappear, he just Ray's going to be like, you know where he's always wanted to go. <laughs> A cruise ship <laughs> was this pizza place in North Kansas City. <laughs> Me and Tim drive past this pizza place all the time on our way to lunch and every time we go, oh, we need to try we that. Try that. We so try I'm that. saying if I disappear, you're yeah. going to go to the police and be like, He's always wanted to go to that pizza yeah, place. Yeah, he always he also plays this video game called The Watcher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, to this day, no one's found him. He could be in Italy. He could be in Russia. He could have paid off the FBI. He could be dead. Honestly, he's sixty-seven. Like he could have died of natural he causes. He didn't by look now healthy. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, or uh, he's just living in plain sight out there in the world. He could be. He could be in one of the cars that drives by. I was literally, <laughs> oh dang it! I hate that you did that. I was literally about to be like, uh, I mean, he could be. Look out your window right now. Yeah, he. Could, I could be one of them. <laughs> he could be across the street in a window with binoculars, watching you open up your briefcase. He could be <laughs> in the Appalachian Mountains. You know. Do you know how many marathons you'd be allowed to run if you had seventeen million dollars? <laughs> the entry fee is a dollar sixty and a pack of smokeless cigarettes. Oh, wait a wow. minute. Anyway, I really think what happened is he paid off the director of the FBI. Yeah, I think I, what I happened really is think the devil happened. helped him do it. <laughs> <laughs> Satan. He was like, please, Satan. Dear Satan. <laughs> Dear Satan. <laughs> If you give me out of this, I'll give my life to you. I'll give you thirteen million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddle off, John. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Things I Learned Last Night. If you like this video, we have others you can watch, or we have highlights some of our favorite moments from shows. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on Things I Learned Last Night.